there. Welcome to another edition of Cutler Corner. I'm Representative Josh Cutler, proud to represent the towns of Pembroke, Duxbury, and Hanson. Happy New Year. We're glad to be back with another year of, uh, of programs here. And we have a special one uh, today for you. Two great guests from uh, the town of Pembroke. Pleased to have with me my left, uh, Bill Bolter, who's a member of the Board of Selectmen and also a president of the Pembroke Police Boys and Girls Club, which we're going to talk about in a moment. And also pleased to have uh, with me uh, another Pembroke resident, Mike Cogburn, who's the founder and the chairman of the uh, Pembroke Titans Against Drugs uh, organization, which has um, come into being this past year and has been very active in a short amount of time and doing some great things in the community. And so we, we thought we'd bring you together and talk about um, some of the issues going on with each of your respective groups. I think they complement each other, trying to address um, our youth and make sure they're headed in the right direction and uh, they're aware of uh, you know, some of the dangers out in the world and what we can do to steer them in the right way. So um, thanks again for, for joining me, both of you. Hope to have a good discussion. Uh, we'll start with uh, you, Bill. Um, you are obviously very active in town, uh, from Selectman, from the 300th, from a lot of different ways. But today we wanted to come on and have you talk a little bit about something that maybe, you, maybe people aren't as aware of here in Pembroke and around the South Shore, which is um, we have a Boys and Girls Club right here in Pembroke. And they do some, uh, some pretty cool programs. Could you first kind of tell our viewers like, a little bit more about the club and what they, what they offer and how you got involved? Um, <clears throat> well, actually, I uh, got involved um, back in the late 70s. Um, we used to uh, pick up the kids and take them to uh, uh, Norwell because we didn't have a place in Pembroke. And then uh, we ended up at the community center uh, for a couple of years. And, uh, and then the building opened up, the VFW building opened up uh, the GAR Hall. And uh, we uh, petitioned the town to take that over and turn it into a boys and girls club. Although it was named Pembroke Police Boys Club, uh, Back then, 35 years ago, it was uh, probably we had, um, were thinking more about uh, being in line with the Hanover Police Boys Club uh, and more about boys getting in trouble and not girls. Uh, <laughs> and um, so that's why it was named that. But we have both boys and girls inside the club. Um, we, uh, we teach karate, um, boxing, and weightlifting, uh, weight training. And um, there's other programs that, that we do uh, through the police. Um, we've done uh, RAD programs uh, for women, some self-defense programs for women, um, some other programs in there for adults. And um, when we can find an instructor that wants to donate their time or do it very reasonable, then, then we try to, uh, to offer those programs to the town also. Now we say you say we bill. Mm -hmm. um, this is uh, a nonprofit organization. Is that correct? How, yes, what is it? Is. Okay, and who is a we? I, it's obviously includes you. You yeah. have a good group of people, uh, volunteers in town. Um, yes, we have um, we have uh, quite a few volunteers. Um, it originally started with all police officers that were involved in it. Um, in the boxing program, we had uh, uh, people from the court that were involved in it, so that if anybody was getting in trouble down in court. Then the court officer was was uh, assigned to Pembroke. Uh, he was also trained in uh, boxing, and he would bring the kids in and and um, you know show them the right way. Mm -hmm. um, we also had judges involved in it over the years, and um, it was um, currently we have a, uh, a federal marshal that's helping us um, do some training for some of the kids in the boxing program, and. Uh, um, the club doesn't have as many kids in it today as it used to, but um, that's one of the things that we're trying to do is to spruce up the club, get it in shape, mm -hmm. um, you know, get things a little better, get some modern equipment. Um, it's 35 years old, and we haven't asked for a dime from the, you know, from the town in the 35 years we've done it ourselves uh, through fundraising efforts and all that. and. Uh, now we need a new roof and things like that, mm. and we want to bring it up to today's codes. And sure. Uh, now you mentioned, you know, so you, you, it sounds like you know it's open to anyone in Pembroke. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, but there's a particular focus on what, what would you would you say it's fair to say at-risk youth, you know, kids who maybe need a little bit of a structure. Yeah. Is that what, originally what um, the goal? Uh, it, some of the things also was was um, that we worked in there uh, was the fact that uh, if people couldn't afford it, they couldn't afford to go to a gym. Uh, we had single parents that, that, you know, were trying to bring their kids up that just couldn't afford to send their kids to gyms and things mm -hmm. like that. 
Um, then we all, always offered them a program free. Um, anybody of the kids that get into any of the karate programs or anything that we ran, we always took care of those kids and made sure they had the geese and things like that. Didn't have to pay for promotions and those kind mm -hmm. of things. That uh, um, There's a lot of really good stories about kids that came out of the club that are uh, very professional people today. Um, you know, there's uh, state police officers, military officers. Uh, one of the most recent uh, photos I got back from uh, John Hughes from Pembroke was, uh, he's, um, I believe he's a, uh, a captain or a colonel now in the Army, and he, he was uh, liaison for uh, Korea, uh, for the United States. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a, a big position for sure. a kid to come out of Pembroke um, you know, and and, uh, and have that position in the in the military. So, uh, we've had a lot of really good stories about people that, that have gone there. That's over great. The years, so. so, Mike, this is a good transition to you because obviously, you know, what your group is involved with is trying to build awareness and education for young people, um, and you know, obviously, that's just one component. But tell us a little bit about um, first how you got involved in the Pembroke Titans Against Drugs and how it came into being. Sure. So, I started it. What, uh, what I've been telling people is you know, driving you know, to and from work, airport, et cetera, my car rides, my mind is spinning a bit, and I found myself being increasingly worried about some of the opiate and you know, heroin overdoses that yeah. have been in the news the past, say, you know, couple of years. Um, and I had been going under the assumption that all Pembroke kids had DARE, um, a DARE program in their lives, and as I started to hear more and more of those stories and think about the experiences I had with there as a, as a young, um, a 12 year old in Pembroke where I grew up. Um, I started asking around and re when I realized I didn't have it anymore, I became a little bit more concerned and mm -hmm. not just for my own kids, but um, I coach um, a lot of sports in town, 11 months out of the year of coaching something pretty much. Um, and just, you know, just worried. so. Uh, spoke to some police officers, spoke to the police chief a couple of times, and then <coughs> started learning about what uh, some of the local coalitions do in other towns in the South Shore. And um, as, I, as I learned how worried all the other communities were as well, and even communities with DARE programs mm -hmm. uh, and uh, things like that in the schools, um, I just said someone has to do something. I wasn't sure that I necessarily had the time for it. And Still not sure, but I make it work. I don't sleep much, um, and it, it took it took me about six months to formally um, kick the group off. We got town sponsorship from the selectmen as yeah. a as a town committee, uh, and then it actually grew so fast in terms of just sheer number of people who wanted to volunteer uh, that uh, we we essentially divided the um, Pembroke Titans against drugs. Group, which is the, which has become the large body of volunteers, is over 110 people, uh, in some form that have expressed interest in helping. Uh, along, uh, we divided that into one larger body, and then we have a smaller, um, what we're calling the Pembroke Drug Prevention Coalition, that um, is the leadership arm of this thing that mm -hmm. um, helps set our budgets and um, make sure that the programs that we're doing out in the community align well with. Um, we have Three, three goals that we want to make sure whatever we're doing in the community tied to at least one of them. And what are the three time. goals? The, uh, three, the first one is around providing education to the kids, mm -hmm. uh, specifically about drugs, uh, drug abuse. Um, I, I like to describe it as just getting information to kids and, and yeah. also you know, part of that is getting it to their parents. Uh, the second one is around just promoting healthy decisions, health, healthy lifestyles, healthy relationships, um, confidence building, um, all of those types of things um, in the community. And there's some programs we're exploring now mm -hmm. to do that, which I can get into if you'd like. Uh, and then the third one is um, helping provide direction of some sort to, um, to families in the community that may be struggling in, uh, with the stressors of having addicted loved ones, kids for instance, um, and not knowing where to turn. And that has popped into my mind not only from hearing 
some people in the town that are going through it or have gone through it, but also just wondering, you know, my, my kids are just as susceptible to this as anybody's, and what would I do? I'm not sure. Sure. So. Yeah, there's, a, there's always a feeling like that wouldn't, doesn't happen in our town, and obviously it, it is, and exactly. it, it does. And uh, Bill, you know that as a former, former police chief as well as a selectman, uh, you're uh, certainly aware uh, of. Actually, for quite a few years, I was a drug officer in Pembroke um, and saw a lot Do you remember of, young Mike uh, Cogburn? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he never yeah, got into trouble, so. Yeah, I don't think so, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's, it's definitely, uh, I mean, I see it as my role as a legislator, uh, people all, you know, all the time, um, and that's why it's great to see you know, these local groups spring up, because obviously the state has a role, but we, we can't uh, get it all done at the state level. It needs to be uh, local initiatives, and you know, that's why it's been great to see Pembroke Titans Against Drugs yeah. kind of flourish. And really. I imagine, Josh, that some of, some of the struggles that you have are um, prevention initiatives versus some of the you know, existing right. assistance and help. I Prevention, think. awareness, you know, enforcement. There's a lot of different aspects of this, and um, you know, it's really one of those issues that has needs to be conf confronted from all sides. Um, you mentioned, you know, confidence building. That seems like that's a good uh, bridge between what both of you were talking about. You know, I, I assume things like boxing or karate, self-defense. That's a confidence building kind of thing yes, as well. Yes. And if, you know, kids are getting into that, getting into sports. They're less likely to get, you know, get down uh, the wrong path. Um, do, do, mm -hmm. do you think there's a good, I mean, it seems like there's a, be a lot of complementary stuff between um, both of your organizations? Um, I, I think that they work together good, and, and, I, and I agree with you 100% as far as everybody has to chip in on this problem. Uh, not, you know, not just some people, everybody in the town's got to pitch in, because it it's going to take a group effort of, of all to, to work on this uh, particular problem that, that he's trying to do. Yeah. It's, uh, I, I know, Mike, you're very involved in, in coaching youth sports and youth football now and other sports during the season, and I'm sure you must see that as well. Do you find that it's true the kids who get involved in sports are less likely to, to make poor decisions, or you think it's um, equal opportunity? For, as a coach, it yeah. remains to be seen, because yeah. the kids I coach are, are, are younger, are no older than 10 years old right now. <laughs> Hopefully they're um, not. Yes. Yeah, I've been coaching them in various sports since they were probably five, so I've, and that's why I'm so close to so many. And it's, yeah. you know, in a small town, you end up at some point um, coaching them one way in one sport or the other, um, all of them probably. Um, but you know, as someone that has been involved in sports my whole life, uh, still playing basketball and soccer each once a week, um, uh, there's certainly some discipline, some confidence, some um, even just being busy and having goals, uh, other than you know sitting on the couch and, and trying to, not necessarily mm -hmm. trying to find trouble. I, I, I do trouble feel like, finds you. I feel like <laughs> people are, yeah. are good, you know, um, good to begin with. But um, yeah, I, I just, and, and it doesn't have to be sports, right? That's the other thing. A lot of what I talk about and, and some of the, the partnerships that I'm forming in town are sports related, but that's just because, you know, that's um, where my passions lie. Sure. Uh, we're also trying to branch out into things like the Boy Scouts and um, arts and music groups as well. So, um, good. Well, let's um, let, let's take a break here. Uh, we've got a quick uh, a moment from our sponsors, I believe, and we'll come back. And I want to hear about some of the events that you guys have planned and what else is, is on the docket. Uh, uh, you are tuning in to Cutler Corner with Representative Josh Cutler, my guests Mike Cogburn and Bill Bolter, and we'll be back right after this. And we're back. I'm uh, Josh Cutler, State Representative for Pembroke Duxbury and Hansing. You're watching Cutler Corner. And again, my guests um, here today with me are Mike Cogburn from Pembroke Titans Against Drugs and Bill Bolter, who has 100 different titles, uh, <laughs> member of Board of Selectmen, uh, Chairman of the 300th Committee. But today we're talking yeah. about his role as President of the Pembroke uh, Police Boys and Girls Club. So um, again, thanks. Yeah. Before the break, we were kind of chatting about a little bit of background about how we got involved, how the, the two organizations work, what your kind of your goals are. And I want to talk about some of the things that you got coming up. Um, Bill, we'll start with you. I know um, you mentioned before the break that um, 
you, you're, you're privately funded, but you are looking for donations, trying to get the community a little bit more involved, a little bit more, build awareness. What, yeah. are, the things, what are some of the things you're doing to try to build awareness and, and try to expand um, um, what's going actually on? Actually, we're, we're um, in the process of filling out an application and all that for uh, CPC funds to- CPC uh, to meaning the, the Community Preservation community Committee? Preservation to um, um, the roof that's on the top of the building is 35 years old yeah. and that's- uh, Now just for people who may not be aware, the building is right there on, um, right there in Pembroke Center. Right, 140 Center Street in, in it's a, it's Pembroke people, Center. It's a nice white building with the, yep, the sign it's out front. Yeah, old VFW GAR Hall. Okay. And, um, you know, it's a, it's a uh, historic building. And uh, when we took it over, it was very historic. And we've had to do a lot of repairs to it over the years. Yeah. And uh, so now, after 35 years, we're looking for the community to jump back in and help us uh, bring everything up to code. Um, one of the local uh, people as uh, uh, businesses has donated a uh, brand new fire alarm system for the building. Nice. So that's really, you know, really uh, good for us. And uh, we're just trying to get everything back in uh, tip top shape, uh, you know, and keep it going for another 35 years if we can. I, I think it's important for the kids to have a place to go um, after school and um, be somewhere with, with somebody that is a, a good role model, mm -hmm. which, which helps out in, in his form, is that if these kids are with the wrong people, they get the wrong ideas. Mm -hmm. And uh, at least if they're with uh, good role model people that, that are gonna show them the right way, I think that's what they need. You know, that's part of the help that, that uh, would help the community. So, um, like I said, we've been there for 35 years and we've, we've had a lot of good kids come out of there and uh, it's uh, I think it's a, a really good program the instructors there uh, don't get paid everything is volunteer it's all volunteers um, it's a nonprofit uh, organization and then um, you know it's um, I just think it's good for the kids and uh, good for yeah. the community now if there so are parents out there who are listening now who maybe want to get their own kids involved what, what is the best way to, 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 to get involved to find out more about the programs um, but we're going to be doing more on Facebook, and we're yeah. going to be opening up our website, which we haven't had. Um, currently, you can call the club and ask, um, you know, under those three different uh, programs. The phone number there is 781-293-9850. Okay, and I'm sure so our top-notch producer right now is going to put that on the screen yeah. so we can or see that. you can always call my cell phone, 781-389-4548. Uh, and I think everybody's got that, so... Uh, it's in my, it's in my Rolodex. <laughs> as long as you don't call me at three in the morning, that's fine. You know, uh, but um, be more than glad to answer any questions that you have. And uh, um, I know we do have some other people that have seen it on Facebook that that uh, want to come in from uh, other communities that see some of the programs that we have running, and uh, you know, and they want to uh, they want to join. So. Um, and what what are the rough hours of the of the club? Um, usually in the afternoon, about 3, 3.30 in the afternoon mm -hmm. during the week um, until whatever time at night, um, depending on uh, what classes they have going. And, and that varies over time. Sometimes mm -hmm. we have a lot of kids that are involved in a program. Sometimes, you know, like right now there's no football, so um, I think people are looking for what other programs can I get my kids into. Yeah, um, sure. So, that, you know, that's a, it changes, so, um, you know, along with the seasons and what they're involved in. Well, I got, I have hockey, and I got uh, this, and I got that, and I guess so I can't fit that in, so, uh, you know, things come and go. Sure, so, but, well, that's uh, a good transition. Mike, um, so you have a couple of, uh, of events coming up, uh, one a fundraiser and one sort of a, an awareness event. Can you tell us about, uh, starting off, I guess, you would have been on February 12th. Tell yep. us about that. You should be familiar. I, I, will, be, I will be there. there. <laughs> but um, these folks don't know. <laughs> um, February 12th, Pembroke Community Middle School, um, uh, doors open at 6.45 p.m., I believe. Uh, we're hosting a parent education night um, around the, the current state of you know, substance abuse issues in our area. We have some guest speakers, uh, Josh, um, as well as Senator DiMacito, Police Chief Rick Wall, <coughs> uh, the District Attorney Tim Cruz mm -hmm. is, is joining as well. And, and, and Sheriff McDonald and as Sheriff well. Sheriff McDonald, yeah. So yep. you have a good, so, uh, good panel. Yeah. We're and I'll be on it as well, although I will never um, claim to be an expert at all in any of these areas. I just, uh, I I'm a dad that's trying to do something, essentially. 
Um, but uh, we're just going to talk about you know what what the issues are, some tips for parents. Uh, I, I do wholeheartedly believe that every parent should come because um, it's not something to be ignored. And I, mm -hmm. I think some of the the stories and the statistics will really uh, surprise that all of them. To be honest. Now, is this um, something that's suitable for high school age parents or even younger age parents? We're saying anyone. Yeah. Um, we're asking that it's parents only, uh, so that you know, in, in case any, mm. uh, there's no jarring, you know, uh, conversations that occur. But uh, and there there shouldn't be. But just in case, ideally, yeah. it's it's parents only. We'll never uh, say no to kids. Uh, we are trying for the future to have some kid-specific uh, programs, mm -hmm. uh, including uh, we've talked to some some guest speakers uh, about scheduling. Um, Chris Heron, for example, sure. if anyone's familiar with his story. Yeah. Uh, there's, a, there's a few others like that. Uh, Jeff Allison as well, who's um, a baseball player that had some similar issues and, and right. other right. Right, touring, doing some speaking. So, um, but yeah, this specific event is for parents uh, and we'll be serving refreshments afterwards. Uh, some pretty good stuff too, so it's okay if you, if you gotta hustle and skip dinner, we'll, we'll feed you. Uh, we just want to get the message out and, and make sure that you know, parents understand what's going on and, and some things sure. to be thinking about with their own kids. So it's fair to say, it, it, you know, parents with, with younger kids should could, should consider going as well because I mean, this is something you want to look ahead to, not just look back on. Absolutely, yeah. and some of the research uh, that we've come across uh, is, is uses the ages 12 and up most of it for uh, the beginnings and some of the warning signs of of experimentation and even. Um, abuse so even if you have a six or seven year old it's something that mm -hmm. you know, unfortunately you have to at least be thinking about um, you know in the, in the near term so. so that's February 12th at uh, 645 at the middle school correct number community middle school I'm sure doors will be open a bit before doors will be open earlier and, and your guests are going to stick around afterwards and people can ask questions and, and, and there'll be a lot of interaction it sounds like yep, as well. and food and, and yeah. food it's usually what gets people. To food is always good. Person. That's always well. Um, so you mentioned Chris Heron and Jeff Allison, some of the speakers. Obviously, you know, getting people like that to come in sometimes can have a you know cost, and so raising funds must be um, something you need to focus on as well. I know you have an event coming up the following month. Can you tell us about that and some of the other things you're doing to try to, to raise money? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, March 14th, I believe, uh, we're having a casino night at the Pembroke Country Club. Uh, the the way it'll work is. It's, I believe, a $20 admission at the door, and you get some, some um, you know, play money casino chips that there'll be a, a variety of casino games to play, mm -hmm. and uh, there'll be some prizes award to the people who have the best luck that night, as well as uh, some raffles and silent auctions um, going on, too. So we're trying a few different ways that night to, to get people to uh, help support us. We've also um, running some small raffles outside the event, uh, right now, there's some uh, soccer memorabilia that was donated to us from the U.S. The captain of the U.S. national soccer team, Clint nice. Dempsey, um, uh, sent us some some things to raffle off. We're raffling that stuff off now. Uh, so we're we're we are trying to run this group sort of like a business. So uh, we're always trying to raise money, um, whether it's a big event or, or or something small we can do in the community. The other thing I should mention of the event was we're looking for sponsors, local businesses. Oh, we, yeah. have, um, we have a few, diff four or five different tiers of sponsorship, depending on um, uh, price uh, of what it'll get you in terms of um, advertisement uh, as a donor at the event too. So, uh, and how do people get involved with, you, with your group or learn more, or attend your meetings, and what's the best way to? So our website has not that. launched yet. However, it, it should in the next month or two. Uh, we have a Facebook page, um, which is called Titans Against Drugs, okay. and um, an email address that uh, we man pretty much 24/7. There's a couple of us, uh, Pembroke T A D at gmail.com. Pembroke T A D at gmail.com. I'm sure that's on our screen right now as we're speaking, Great. right? <laughs> Excellent. Um, so, what is the longer-term goal, Mike? You know, you're trying to raise money, build awareness. Is there a longer-term goal that you have in mind? So, my, I. My nirvana would be <laughs> to uh, to have enough money that we can fund um, programs and, and you know donate to the schools and or the police department, for instance, for maybe a, a dare or a dare-like program uh, to get uh, an officer or, or a group of officers involved 
with the kids. Um, we're also uh, doing some smaller scale things in the meantime. Uh, so we're announcing uh, this coming weekend at the Pembroke Titans and cheerleading um, year-end banquet that we're partnering with them. Um, it's our first partner in this realm uh, to sponsor awards to give um, to, to athletes within the organization for um, some on goal number two that I mentioned earlier with promoting healthy decisions, lifestyles, mm -hmm. confidence, all of that stuff. Um, kids that exemplify that, just to give them something to strive for and to to uh, you know to to reward it. Sure. Um, and and we're trying to do uh, more of those things as well. And all this costs money, right? So yes. The other pieces are we are working on applying for grants, um, and that's where the ba the larger amounts of money I would envision come in, which may help get sure. more Sure. And I know money. you're working with this, some regional groups here on the South Shore as well that you guys have been involved with, and obviously this is an issue that doesn't just touch Pembroke or any one town, but really the whole region. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, um, and our model so far has been Situate's group, uh, Situate uh, Facts is their name, and, and they last year secured a grant from the Drug Free Communities of America for right. uh, $600,000 over five years. That's terrific. And the, wow. I actually spoke to the district attorney's office who's gonna help us uh, ready the coalition to apply for that, hopefully as soon as next year. Uh, and they mentioned that it's actually uh, opening up to 10 years, so it could be a $1.2 million grant uh, that would significantly That would really make a us. difference, yeah. Right. Well, maybe we can talk Bill out of retirement to come back as the, the DARE officer <laughs> once we get these, <laughs> these funds. Uh, you know, you don't have enough on your plate already, Pro I don't, I don't think. Probably not. No, I'm sure you could. You know, by then, the, yeah. the, the Boys and Girls Club will be all yeah. up to date and will be good. Well, believe yeah. it or not, we're almost out of time. I know it's, uh, things go by so quickly. I wanted mm -hmm. to make sure each of you got a chance to just kind of give a plug and a final uh, info about how to get involved, if they want to learn more about what you're doing, if they want to contribute, if they're a business that wants to sponsor. Both of you have, a, it sounds like that's a, a good opportunity. Bill, yeah. I'll start with you. Can you kind of um, share with our viewers how to get involved? We have a, um, we have a post office box, 84. Yep. If somebody wants to send in a donation to, uh, to the uh, Pembroke Police Boys Club. Uh, our telephone number there is 781. Two nine three, nine eight five zero, and you can call there uh, usually in the afternoon. And if there's other specific information that you need, you can always call me on my cell phone, and that's seven eight one three eight nine four five four eight. I think this is a great program that he's doing. Um, mm -hmm. It's right along the lines of of uh, why we started the boys club in the original mm -hmm. uh, way back 35 years ago was for the police to work with the community and the kids. Yep. And I think that really helped. I know it helped me in law enforcement um, working with the kids. Um, a lot of them said, uh, "Oh my God, here comes Sergeant Bolta," but <laughs> a lot of them were friends because sure. we worked out together at the club and. Uh, and became yeah. friends uh, over the years. Mike, we're just about out of time. In 10 seconds or less, can you give us a, a plug for, for your group one more time? Sure. Uh, just email us if you want to help out in any way, pembroketad at gmail.com, whether it's volunteering as part of the group, lending an hour or two a month or a year, whatever it may be, uh, or, of course, well, we'd love some business sponsorship Excellent. for our event. Excellent. Well, thank you again, bo thank again you. both for coming on and being my guests. Uh, thank you all for tuning in. Again, I'm Representative Josh Cutler, and you've been watching Cutler Corner. Have a great day.